I've been a professional academic researcher in philosophy, politics, and history, the three separate fields, for 28 years. I've done nothing else but this for almost 30 years. It's staggering, the sheer amount of material I've been through, good, bad, and indifferent. I have eight books out. I've taught all over the country. I've been through hell, marriage, divorce, everything else. But let me tell you, and this is very relevant to what we're going to talk about here, I have a list of things, general truths that I've learned, things that I've learned that I didn't want to learn, things that I wish weren't true. These are things that only experience can teach you. Now let me summarize them briefly. Number one, almost all historical knowledge that the average educated American has is sheer fantasy. And they have no way of correcting that, really. Number two, truth is almost never a concern for people when it comes to making general decisions, especially about who they are, their identity, their mission, what they're going to support and not. Number three, freedom is a meaningless abstraction. The term freedom abstractly is something that people love, but the minute you say that you are then responsible for what you do with that freedom, they hate it. They want to be empowered, but they forget that power is in fact a awful burden. Number four, humans are not rational, and therefore they're not free. Rationality is hard. Rationality is difficult. Freedom is almost impossible for most people, because that means you have to use critical reason all the time. Number five is that to be human, you have to be both rational and free. That's the nature of humanity. Otherwise, you're just this hunk of flesh on two legs. So number six, free will is a result of ascetic struggle and study. No one's born this way. Free will, if it's really free and it's really willful, is usually nothing but pain. Number seven, the individual is a myth. The individual doesn't even make sense. Nothing that the individual does actually belongs to him. The technology that I'm using, the language that I'm using, the logic, that I'm, the historical knowledge, none of this is mine. Nothing. Individualism is a contradiction because the minute you try to defend it, you're using communal property, logic, knowledge, emotion, the, the language and gestures and the whole community of meaning that you have to have for any words that we use to make sense. The individual is, is ridiculous and did not exist really until industrialization. Number eight is one of the hardest ones. And that is that people want to hear only what serves their interests. Number nine, very few people are capable of love. And that includes children. But, I mean, loving their children. Love is very difficult. Love is as diff difficult as, as analysis. Self-interest is the dominant emotion, and that's the very opposite of love. At the same time, number ten, very few people are capable of sustained thought. So what I mean to say is that reason and, and things that go into reason, like evidence, they're almost never the cause of anyone adopting some opinion. Number 12, people can rationalize anything. It's one of the most horrible things to learn. Women are better at this than men are, but everyone does it. That means you can never trust anyone. And you live in a society where there is no truth, and therefore you could rationalize anything. Number 13, today in universities, serious historical criticism is almost non-existent. Number 14 sounds odd, but there are people out there who have never suffered. You think everyone has problems, everyone suffers. I'm telling you that there are a few people out there who have never suffered a day in their lives. Number 15, insanity, that is to say to be a psychopath, is far more common than people realize. Number 16, people lie constantly. And it gets to the point where often they don't know the difference one way or the other. And finally, most arguments come down to disagreements over the meaning of terms. So even if you assume that someone knows how to think rationally, which is only a handful of people, and it's very hard to do. The terms that we use, 
Today's English bears very little resemblance to the English even just a century ago. Words have radically changed their meanings, both in terms of what they connote and what they denote. That group of 17 things is the result of a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. I didn't know any of this when I first went to college. But there is no escaping it. People know that this is true, but they hate to say it, and they don't want to believe it. Because if this is true, then ideologies like liberal democracy, human rights, the free market, they have to go out the window. Because none of them make any sense if those 17 things, or even, even half of them are true. We assume, you know, these ideologies assume that the average person, say the average educated person, be nice about it, can identify their self-interest. That, I know, doesn't exist. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. That they can tell the difference between the common good and their own good. That they can act in the most efficient way possible. That their major decisions are based on facts and sound reasoning, not emotion or some other heteronymous drama. We assume, and this is not a rational assumption, that people seek to avoid harm and pursue the good. And finally, that a moral community exists within which people can think and act. But those are just, that's just a smattering of things that one has to assume if you want to make, you know, the free market or human rights or liberal democracy make any sense. I wrote the book, The Third Rome. I was uh, 29, I think. I had a young family. And the book was angry. So those of you who've read it, there's a lot of it that I would retract today. Not the general thrust, of course, but I was angry, and I was angry because I was just learning these things. You know, for decades, I've slaved over difficult texts and translation. I've built arguments in the most painstaking fashion, only to leave the academy and to learn that evidence and logic are of no interest to people. Or it only works if they're rationalizing something. The anger that I felt, the anger that I continue to feel in my writing, and it's certainly there, comes from this fact. 